for real. <laughs> Hi everyone and welcome back to The Vlogsmith, episode 2. Today we'll be talking about safe ah! No, go ahead. Ah! Are you done yet? Okay. Today I will be talking about safety, as it happens to be a very important topic. A lot of people have asked me certain questions about that. So we'll touch a little bit about that today, and then we'll transition to the project of the day. Also, thank you for being patient with me. A lot of you have been looking forward for the episode 2 to come out, and I've had a few scheduling difficulties, and we even had a inclement weather day. Hot weather is inclement weather to me. Sorry I snapped at you. Anyway, now that that has been said, let's head over to the forge. Okay, before we begin our project today, let's talk a little bit about the safety guidelines that I have adopted. A good place to start is protective eyewear. It's one of the most important pieces of safety equipment you can have on. Next, let's talk about the leather apron. It can protect you from other hot embers flying onto your clothing and catching them on fire. Notice also that I don't have any long sleeve shirts and that the material is not a nylon blend because that can catch on fire and adhere to your skin and it's very dangerous. Now on to footwear. For obvious reasons, you don't want to have any kind of open-toed shoe, and preferably a steel-toed boot, such as this. That way, in case you drop a very heavy piece of metal, it could spare you from injury. Now you'll notice in my videos that I don't wear any gloves, and a few of you have asked me about that. And I'll tell you why. When wearing work gloves like these, you could get a hot ember inside of your glove, and you would not be able to take your glove off fast enough to take the ember off. They do make a heat resistant glove out of Kevlar that is quick release that all you have to do is just swing your arms down and they'll fly right off to get the hot embers out. But they are really expensive. Like, really expensive. It's also a good idea to wear earplugs and a respirator. But you notice that I don't wear anything because otherwise I won't be able to hear myself speak and, well, then this vlog would be kind of pointless. Now, the hat. It mainly keeps crap like soot out of my hair. Plus, it's a wonderful fashion accessory. Let's get familiarized with the anvil, shall we? What we have here is the London type anvil. This part here is called the face. We have the table, and the horn, the shoulder, the heel, the base where the feet are, and the hardy and pritchel hole, which are used for mushroom steaks. Now, will there be a test? Yes, there will be a test. Okay, now that we're done with that, I'm going to go ahead and begin on my project today, which is a door knocker. Today I have some square stock that I'm going to be bending over. Let's go ahead and put that in the fire.
went ahead and cooled down my wrenches because they were getting too hot, especially the small one. And that's it there. I think I'm going to leave it that long. I'm going to go ahead and cut off the end piece here. I don't require that. so that it strikes the door, or do I put it in the center so that it strikes the metal? I think I'm going to go ahead and put it in the, the center. I'm going to go ahead and let this cool on another anvil. Okay, yeah. I'm going to be using this bar to create that hump in the middle. I'm going to be using bending forks to go ahead and bend what I need it out of. I realize that I'm kind of doing it the wrong way. Um, what I'm going to do instead is actually fold it over onto itself using that bar in the middle uh, as a pivot. So we'll try that instead. I'm going to try this approach here. back to my uh, the actual knocker here. I'm going to bend it over. Now what I'm going to do is open them up so I can put them into the hinge. That should be wide enough for it to fit in there. I think we're done here. Okay guys, so... I went ahead and went home and polished it up again, just like usual. This time I used a Kratex wheel. It's a, uh, a buffing wheel that has a very thick, very porous 
type of abrasive. It's kind of rubbery. Uh, I had, actually, I got one with the wheel. This is kind of what it looks like. As you can see, what I did with the Scotch Brite wheel, and here's that hammered look. Mail time. Okay, so check this out. Jesse Roman of Anomaly Accessories on Etsy uh, happened to ask me if I wanted a Twitter handle made out of uh, metal. And now I'm going to go ahead and open it. Oh, that's cool. Check it out. My Twitter handle, at Solomon1138. And now it's time for questions. Farlandier asks, have you done any sculpted shapes like animals or faces worked into metal pieces? You know, I have not, and that would be actually a lot of fun to try to work on. Uh, sculpting metal isn't really easy. It's not like you can go ahead and chisel it away like rock or form it like clay. Um, yeah, I'll look into that. that. That sounds like something very interesting for me, even. I would, I would definitely like to make shapes into a lot of the stuff that I uh, forge. Daniel Wallace writes, Forge time should be on a t-shirt. That's a really good idea. Check out my Iron Man themed case. I know you're jealous. Oh, and everyone, I don't think I'm going to go ahead and put this up on eBay. I'm going to leave it at my Etsy store, which I haven't made yet. I know, I know. But yeah, uh, let me know if you guys want it. Let's go test it out, shall we? Awesome. Can I help you? Anyway, thanks for being a part of Vlogs with Episode 2. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Please be sure to subscribe and like. Who are you even talking to? Shut up, dude. Anyway, be sure to also follow me on Twitter at Solomon1138. Yeah, whatever, weirdo. And as always, take care.